greeted us. That's nice. Um, oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sorgatron Media <laughs> slash Times Online coverage of uh, WWDC, Ooh. the Worldwide Developer Conference. Of course, the keynote is about to kick off here uh, in about two minutes my time, it looks like. Uh, we got uh, we got set up. We got the hangout for you guys. If uh, we've start, I got a bunch of people in my circles, and if they want to join us, uh, go ahead. Uh, and you can also join us at live.sorgatronmedia.com for the chat room. And of course, timesonline.com has the hangout uh, streaming live, where some of you are probably watching this now. Um, so uh, with me, I just want to introduce before we kick off, who is our our panel? Uh, so far, of course, Michael Pound of the Beaver County Times. How you doing, guys? Joining us because uh, Skype doesn't really work out from the office, I guess. Oh, uh, it's kind of rough. <laughs> you know, although, you know, you know, we 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 solved the problem by by multiplying our hangouts. You know, so we've got two instances running at one time. It's, it's how many how many of these can you get one at once? Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, that, I think I invited you that from AwesomeCast. So I, I wanted to make sure there wasn't any cross because it seems like Google Plus gets confused sometimes. No. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, like, like you know, it, it's open that, like, I, I have it on my account, but mm -hmm. I can also join my own Hangout on my phone through the same account. Yeah. So I, I always worry about that kind of crossing. Eh, so. Okay. Don't cross the streams. And also with us, Fuzzwa joined us for a lot of the E3 coverage last year from InsertCoinToBegin.com. How you doing? How's your uh, How's your post E3 buzz fading? Uh, it's um, just me looking forward to the next Assassin's Creed because I finished up Revelation, so just antsy at this point. Perfect. <laughs> and that was last week, not last year. That's, uh, I don't even know anymore. I, <laughs> I don't even know. There's so many of these anymore. I feel like I've been doing them forever now. We just started. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're kicking off. Like I said, I have, I got a This Is It at uh, 10 o'clock and 24 seconds a.m. Local time at uh, Pacific time for WWDC. I am following uh, the Verge live blog. And I don't know, what are, you, what are you guys' uh, selected methods of... Uh, on the Engadget on the blog, they have a good mix of pictures and text. Yeah, Engadget. Okay. What about okay. you, Mike? I, I, I've got um, both Mashable and Gizmodo up. Um, my, my experience usually is... Um, we'll keep those up and just see how things are going. It looks like it started off with Siri doing some talking. Yeah, like weather jokes by Siri so far. Um, so, um, it's weird because we have to we read and talk. At the we're doing, well, we did the video streams, and that was interesting last week. What? Either we're making an investor jokes, investors to finance your app. There are 392 VCs near you. Big West Coast joke. And making jokes at Android. Any of you guys working with ice cream sandwich or jelly bean? Who's coming up with these? Ben and Jerry. Oh boy. Oh boy. So far so good, huh? Uh, excited about the new Samsung. Not the phone, the refrigerator. Actually, I am excited about the refrigerator, but unfortunately I rent, so I can't even get it. I found 396 venture capitalists close to you. All right, so I, I guess we're just showing off what we already know so far. Uh, nice introductory thing. So, I mean, what are you guys expecting out of this today? Uh, I think a lot of a lot of hardware, but I, 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 if we're starting with Siri, um, I, I think uh, uh, iOS 6 is, is going to be the big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, iOS 6 is definitely going to be the big thing, but. Uh, from what I've read, all of their, pretty much their entire range of computers is getting uh, some sort of update. Mm -hmm. It sounds like everything except for the Mac Mini. Yeah, I'm just hoping they don't make me regret my MacBook Air. Well, that's, you know, that's a fair amount of time. Though. Yeah, that's, that's what I keep telling that, myself. You know. We got a uh, we got a bigger one in the here. Uh, Derek, let me turn you up here for a second. I'm okay. 
basically just got back to the beehive and figured out how to get on here. And hello. Hello, oh, and down I've, the outside. Awesome. I, I have Mac OS rumors live up, by the way, if that, if that, uh, for for yet another source. Okay. Uh, but so far, you guys have everything that I've got. Yeah, yeah. It just seems like a little bit of varying times when these things updating. So, um, I know the Verge last time when they had the iPad announced, I think the the Verge had a, I think they went down like hardcore, like whatever service they were using just just melted. Uh, Derek, I'll keep you up here for commentary until until the hangout gets too crowded here. All right. Sure. So. Or, or if it gets too uh, crazy down there at the Beehive. So, um, well, it looks like uh, is that Tim Cook on stage? I'm seeing. Yes, it is. I'm not as familiar with him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously, with, with, uh, with Rob. So, we have over a thousand Apple engineers here, and closed That's Apple crazy. for the week. This is, a, this is the one that sold out like in like a couple it, hours. An hour, an hour and 43 minutes. Wow, and, and they 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 put out. I remember there's a little bit of controversy because they put out the email like the night before. The good money was on it being when it is now, because basically you can look at the Moscone Center's schedule and see when there's a week blocked out for you know some nefarious thing that's not named. So you can usually figure out when it is. The question is when the tickets go on sale. Yeah, yeah. And that, well, that was the big thing. The announcement for the ticket sales went out overnight and then it sold out that quick. You know, you're waking up on the West Coast. You just missed your chance, you know. But I guess they did make some, uh, I, I think, some concessions with... Um, you know, some standby developers that, like, yeah, they need to be there. So that may have missed it. So 400 million store accounts. That is a lot of credit cards. Has the Apple Store ever been hacked for credit cards yet? I don't know, but here's something interesting that they just said. It said that it's the store with the largest number of accounts with credit cards anywhere on the Internet that they're aware of. I That's basically that bigger than uh, Amazon. That, that, I don't know. That seems like a bit of a stretch to me. Seems like asking to be hacked. Yeah, that too. Begging, begging. Now, right. If they show a broken Guy Fox mask on the screen, then we know that they're just asking to see if they can be hacked or not. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge to me, right? <laughs> so, like, yeah, we got our, this live stream we're showing is from The Verge. Um, we got 30 billion downloads from the App Store. So, this is just a list of the guys paid to be here um, so far. We've written checks for over $5 billion to you guys, the developers there in attendance. Yeah. Is there applause? I didn't, I didn't notice. Hey, I've got my thirty dollars out of the app store, so you know, I'm part of that. I should be there. I haven't been there since 2007. I gotta say, I miss the fun, but can't afford to get there. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's that's a big ticket. I'd like to go, but I have a feeling I'd be lynched if uh, someone saw my Galaxy Nexus come out of my pocket at any point. <laughs> I'll take an iPod Touch just to be incognito. Well, they're adding 32 countries to the 120 that they uh, already operate in with the App Store, it looks like. Yeah, it says they're up to 155 total. Most new countries are in Africa. Well, all those emerging markets in LA, they're probably pushing those... Uh, uh, 3G S phones are so cheap. I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing, but I see a huge missed market here. Greenland. Greenland? It's not lit up on my map. Is it? Maybe I'm reading the map wrong. Yeah, it's not lit up on. Wait, I don't know. It, it's shaded kind of funny, like Canada. I'm oh, not you sure. know what? I, I think it's only showing the 20 countries that they're joining in this map. I don't, we don't have much context for this one. Well, here. Oh, we got the Here we go. Heartwarming stories of the combination of Apple's devices and developer apps. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting the whole thing. Sounds of nature. Blank screen. Now a shot of the forest. 
And a picture of a forest. Thank you. You need to use that, uh, oh, I can't remember his name, uh, LaFontaine, who did the uh, movie intros. In a forest where there's only birds chirping, a man in a plaid shirt walks through the woods. <laughs> yes, because Apple users are definitely fans of plaid, right? <laughs> How does he even have reception out there? You gotta be kidding me. He can't be on AT and T. Wait, wait. I'm uh, blind man is, t is uh, talking about his GPS app to lead him through the forest. I want to develop an app to help blind people explore the world. How are blind people a touch device like this? Yeah, that's a good question. But then also, how are they developing the app? Because it's not like they can see the screen to type the code. That's well, well, for that, sure, I mean, I'm sure you could just tell someone and then like they could work with you. No, I actually have a friend who is a developer who's blind and basically he uses he uses a screen reader and he does his own coding, but he uses a screen reader to do it. I think it's completely possible, yeah. Oh, wow. So. And so people say your apps have changed my life. We're now seeing an app being used in a classroom. Uh, they they made a huge for application development this last year with that uh, with the iBooks author that was really you know pushing towards um, textbooks more than anything. So have we seen any word on any pirated feeds here yet? Behind and don't know English was a challenge. This is the stuff that was in the movies ten years ago, you know, mm -hmm. with the iPad, with you know, with, the, with these touch devices. You know, I, I, mean, I often say, you know, my iPhone is my tricorder. You know, it's here. Mm -hmm. I drew that very analogy this morning. Oh, Mike, I just sent you a new stream link. Okay, uh, did you say something over there? Going to hang out? Just sent you a new stream link. Oh yeah. Where'd you send that through? Uh, through the chat, through the, uh, the Hangout chat. One of the 12 hangouts. <laughs> Anything else interesting going on here? Oh, sorry, you guys are seeing my email. There you Looks like a nice laptop in the back. Her 
in the world of speech learning technology, the iPad is a tool that definitely be able to use the to facilitate her prescribing skills. The coolest thing about those apps are they don't realize that they're actually working on a particular skill. Those reactions. They just went off the air. Someone to mention that the Eastern guy's arm is going to get tired really quickly. <laughs> but it's a lot of, a lot of push in there. Um, what they're doing so far. I mean, they've had a lot of time for developers to really kind of, uh, you know, take the hang of this, you know. Like we talked we talk about last year, or last week, last week, about uh, how uh, you know the the console generation that they, they, they're they're at the point where they're getting the most out of it, and you know really you think about iOS they they've just been building on and building on all these years and they you know they just keep, they just keep adding and growing and there's a uh, looks like the video's user saying thanks to developers so. Yeah, hopefully you get to the juicy stuff here real quick. Thanks for giving me my freedom back, the blind man from the beginning. What about the scrub? Apparently the, the, the Ustream uh, uh, guy has been escorted from the building. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he will never be invited <laughs> back. I'm guessing no. They ripped up his WWDC ticket. Uh, wonder what it's like to be the guy who's supposed to be doing the security who's just sitting there just trying to refresh to find any kind of Ustream or Justin TV or any kind of video feed coming out of there. And then pinpoint it uh, mm -hmm. by triangulating from what he's seeing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can Just think how easy that will be much. once Google Glasses come out. Let me see your glasses. Well, remember, like, remember, like, you go to concerts and they usually wouldn't let you, like, for a period, they wouldn't let you bring your camera phone. Yeah. And now it's going to be like, you know, that, and now nobody cares. Uh, well, versus, since everybody has them, it, it'd be ridiculous. Now it's going to be okay. You can't come in with glasses. <laughs> Looks like they're starting with the notebook announcements. Okay, and now we find out if I'm going to read it. Phil Schiller. Phil Schiller. Okay. Yeah, it looks like more... Oh, I see. They got all of them up. I guess the, the line of things they're going to talk about were showing... Uh, a MacBook Air, a uh, the Lion, and, and iOS 6. Of course, they're going to push iOS 6 to the end. Oh yeah. So we're going to learn how our our desktops are going to change. I presume everybody here is. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Now, Frank, you come from this like you mentioned the uh, uh, Galaxy Nexus. Yeah. Um, do you have an iPad? No. And whenever I do get a tablet, I'm looking to get a Asus Transformer Prime, just because... It's a cool concept. Like, yeah, I, I've played around with with iDevices before. Uh, Abby's sister has an iPad that I've played with. Uh, I've played with the iPhones at the Apple stores, but I just prefer Android to iPhone. And it's really not that iPhone's done anything to my phone. I use my phone for Netflix a lot. Because I have a 4.65 inch screen, mm -hmm. I believe the iPhone right now is currently 
You, you like the real estate. That, that was actually one of the uh, big selling points for me. I got to say that new one, the new, uh, was the new one that you just put out. I know Lilo Port was showing it off on This Week in Tech, and it looks nice. Yeah. So you said, uh, it's, it's revolutionized the notebook. It's a breakthrough. Everyone's trying to copy it. Uh, they find it's not easy, I presume, talking about the errors. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's start with the MacBook Air. And what he's saying, I can completely understand what he's saying because mm -hmm. everyone who's seen, because I have a 13.3 MacBook Air, everyone who sees it is just blown away by how how light it is, mm -hmm. just how great of a computer it is. They're going to uh, new CPUs, Ivy Bridge, up to 2 gigahertz dual core with turbo boosting that's up to 3.2 gigahertz, up to 8 gigs of RAM. Up to 512 gigabytes of storage. So zippy and quick, but now we're making it even faster with the SSD. Uh, we're adding at USB 3, which is for a while a lot of people were wanting USB 3. I have a couple of. Hey, what feed are you working off of? Because Engadget just grows up right at. Let's start with the MacBook Air. Uh, I'm on the Verge. The Verge, okay. The Verge is doing here. Um, I should say I switched to Gizmodo, and Gizmodo seems to be aggre aggre aggregating everybody. Oh, yeah. So they're not even bothering. <laughs> Up to 10 times faster USB 2. Uh, other people have added it to their products. Uh, this is how they do it. This is how we do it. Justifying the jumping right in, I guess. Or not jumping right in. Oh, well, that has been the complaint, because they've been big on Thunderbolt. You see the Thunderbolt uh, port there. Um... But that's, that's nice that they're adding USB 3. That will make a lot of video. Well, I guess it will make a lot of video people happy because who's doing video on a Mac Air? Frankly, I would be. I mean, it's light and easy to carry around. And if you're editing video while you're mobile, the thing you want is fast and light. Yeah, if you're doing light stuff, uh, here you're saying the FaceTime camera is getting updated to 720p. That's cool. Um, comes in 11 and 13 inch, as you know. Uh, we're still rocking the Intel HD graphics. Uh, now the 4000 chip, it looks like. That's the thing kills me for editing. Like I, that's why I, I got like the ACI and the uh, or the Radeon. Like it's the same thing now. Yeah, I just don't trust Final Cut X with Intel graphics. Prices are 9.99 and 10.99 for the 10, for the eliminated four. Is that cheaper than before? I don't think so. I think that's the same price. That's, uh... Alright. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they type it um, What their base model 13 is, the 1199, that's what mine was for the base price. It said, uh, Mashable says the 13 inch is 1199 and $1499. Okay. So Start shipping today. There you go. They were down earlier. Uh, the, the store as of like 1030, I think I looked. Uh, Eastern Time, of course. Also have a nice update to the MacBook Pro. Our customers really care about having the speed for their music, video, and design. Now, the big thing with the MacBook Pro is they were talking that they were going to see about moving the form factor of that to something similar to the MacBook Air, rather than having the more rectangular-ish body to have kind of that wedge shape. I think you kind of need that for, for all your stuff and in there. Up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, turbo boost up to 3.7, 2.7 quad core i7, third gen core i7. Going GeForce GT 60, 650M graphics, which sounds really familiar for some reason. Um, up to 1 gigabyte video memory, 60% faster. I mean, that'll, that'll, that'll handle a lot of time. I guess it's a new generation GeForce chip. Something the IO2 and USB 3. A lot of video uh, video guys out there just uh, became very happy and are about to order their next MacBook Pro. I guess. Um, <laughs> was that, has there been any mention of the uh, Retina displays? I know that was something a lot yet. of people were, were speculating about. I, I don't think that's a thing. I, I that doesn't make sense on a laptop. I think it's for like over speculating on that. Prices stay the same for the most part. It starts with the 2.5 i5, but they got those Intel graphics. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really surprised. Better, but I just, 
I just can't imagine doing that. I'm really surprised there's no Thunderbolt. Oh, there isn't, is it? Wait, oh. wait, 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 wait. No, yeah. no, there's not. Well, what, what's this? Is that just the mini display port? All right. Let me see. Yeah. The, the, the Air is no Thunder. Oh, sorry. The Pro has Thunderbolt. The Air is still no Thunderbolt. Oh, well, that makes sense because Thunderbolt is going to be a Pro thing. No, wait. My my Air has Thunderbolt. I thought that was just a, I a second monitor plugged into right now. Well, the, the, the mini display port is the same port as Thunderbolt. Oh, so I don't actually. I could have sworn that it said that I had Thunderbolt. Does it? Yeah. Does yeah. it? Yeah, there's a little Thunderbolt beside it. Oh, then, then I guess it is. Yeah. So I know the the mini the mini has Thunderbolt already. Yeah. Yeah, the mini absolutely. I think they just kind of glossed over the Thunderbolt thing. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think that they've made a big deal about it before in the past, so they didn't want to just yeah, rehash that. I, I think they're just saying, hey, you know, it's going to be standard at this point. You know, yeah. We got the, this obvious it's there. I mean, you see the picture right there in the front the USB right next to the Thunderbolt. You're, you know, you're good to go. Yeah. So. Also available today, of course, the MacBook. Um, you're really happy. A new model of the laptop. Jim, yeah, actually, we'll just said that. They were talking, I, I read some rumors about having some sort of edition MacBook Pro or something like that, which this might be the one. Maybe the Mac Go Mac back Mac to the Mac. iMac colors, or the iBook colors. Um, huh. And saying, with the MacBook Air, the team did something bold. They're aggressive, embracing new tech. They got rid of stuff that was trending out. Yeah. Able to do something bold. We've been asking the team to think about what would be the next step and the next gen Mac. Pro. Optical drive out the window? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm thinking, too. It's funny. Until you go without it, you, you realize how little you actually use it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially if you're doing video, you're already, you know, offloading half that stuff to, you know, portable drives. Killer new display. There's your retina, probably. Uh-huh. All right. Oh, it's a shadow silhouette on stage there. You want it to be light. You want it to be like anything else. The most beautiful computer we have ever made. There it is. It's in a distant thought of it now. Yeah. Again, guys, you're watching the WWC keynote coverage here uh, with SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, also over on TimesOnline.com. Got Mike Pound, Fuzzwad from Insert Coin to Begin. Some call him Frank. Yep. Very few, though. Very, very few. <laughs> Derek joining us in the Hangout, of course. I'm also got a chat room over at Live.SorgatronMedia.com if you want to tune in that oh, way. That's interesting. They just said that it... Almost yep. very What's it look like? There's the, I think, a USB port and maybe a Thunderbolt port on the one side. Almost no ports. Thinner than my finger. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, next week we're going to be doing it now. I'm 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 going to be doing it yeah. If it's quite open, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. How big is that screen? Is that a 15 or is that a 13? Uh, I can't really tell from this. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they said. Too far away, really. To, I mean, it looks like it's a little point seven one inch. There it is next to the old model. There. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. I think we got some breathing, I think, from you over there, Derek. Sorry. I was chewing on my uh, mic. Thin, as thin as air. Wow. Yeah, and you can tell that it looks like it's still keeping that uh, the square profile, Red even though it's display. much thinner. Right into the display. There you go. Yep, there it is. The 
shot that's on wired now almost makes it look like it's thinner in the back and thicker in the front. Like thicker under the touchpad. I don't think it is. I think it's an optical illusion, but mm -hmm. well, one of the picks, that, one of the uh, shots that they had up earlier on here, uh, actually looked like that too. Uh, we got some specs here: 15.4 inches across. So I guess we're getting one model of this. 2880 by 1800 resolution, 220 PPI. Yikes! Says Verge. Yeah. Wow. wow. We've come a long way from the point where Apple wouldn't even give you a high-res laptop to the point where Apple is now giving you the highest-res laptop. Exactly, exactly. This is going to be... Yeah, that's, that's what they said, world's highest resolution notebook display. So for the elite amongst the uh, MacBook Pro users, <laughs> something like this, four times the number of pixels, world's highest resolution notebook display on screen right now. Wow. I'm going to guess $3,000. Yeah, it's gonna be. Oh yeah. With that display, I think this. I think this thing starts at two thousand. The OS is being updated for the new display, of course, so that'll be right, right in a capable. Um, our nice little magnifying glass trick. Um, yeah, I've been I've been seeing that uh, uh Mikey and Big Bob have been uh. They're figuring out, finding out what their next laptop is today that they're ordering. I'm sure a lot of people are. Because we're updating Safari, iMovie, iPhoto, Retina. I was gonna say all these things need to be updated, or they're not gonna be able to deal with that many pixels. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Farmers are gonna love this, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yes. The other thing is the base memory configuration on this thing is gonna have to be 16 gigs, otherwise you're not gonna have enough memory to do anything with that many pixels. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so that's gonna put the price up there too. Uploading aperture, of course, that makes sense. Updating Final Cut Pro. That makes sense. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're if you're doing HD, that'll uh, that'll do it for you. Or, rea yeah. or realize how bad of a job you're doing at shooting. <laughs> 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 like, oh, I'm not good at this at all. All right, but where's the touch screen? Shouldn't it have a touch screen? No. I, they... I really wanted to though. You, I... you do at this point. Boncut video is 1080p and allows for lots of information around it, full resolution. That the, in that picture there, where they're showing the full thing, this mm -hmm. is at 1080p at this size. I just want to find out what, like what Shadow said, like what kind of hardware this thing has, because yeah, like the memory it would take to do this. We're working on some key developers. Let me give you some examples. Adobe Photoshop. And everyone at Point Park rejoices. Huh. Ooh, that Autodesk. Works. There you go. That's your your field. There. <laughs> New version of AutoCAD. I think my mom might get a Mac next. Start showing her stuff. The Opera Three, if you're ever. Yeah, you the Three, if you can log in. Now wait a minute. There's no Ethernet port on that. Well, there's not on the uh, Air. No, there's not. But that's a Pro. That's not an Air. That's a Pro. It's no, the it's the next generation, generation Pro yeah. where they assigned the same people who just went against the assumptions with the Air and told them to do the same with the Pro. Yeah, because they're shedding old technologies on the way out the door. Yeah. Like physical internet. <laughs> I don't know. All, all I got to say is, you know what LTE stands for, right? Less than Ethernet. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's um. You know, they're not putting a. Uh, no, I, I don't think it's mobile. Yeah, they I don't haven't think said anything yet. They're not putting a mobile chip in this thing. It'd be interesting if they did. 
Well, showing the internals. Everything's packed in there tightly, of course. It's dominated by a battery. <laughs> it takes tremendous work on a battery tech to drive this hardware. Yeah, I would think yeah. so. But, God, that screen. Just shove more battery in there. Yeah, Big Bo have had some great uh, tweets. Here's some stuff from those guys I can't repeat right now on here. Um, yeah, I just read the same thing. <laughs> yeah, please, please don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, fastest RAM, fastest graphics, Core i7, quad core processors up to 2.7, turbo boost up to 3.7. Um, That'll do. Yeah, that'll do it. Of course, it's built around flash storage up to 768. Up to 16 gigs. So, what, do you think it just comes with 8 standard, or do you think they actually have a low ball to 4? Gotta be 8 at this rate. Next-gen Kepler graphics, again, the GeForce GT 650. Flash storage. Yeah, yeah. Up to 7 hours of battery performance. So that so that thing will uh, have that nice little quick boot up like the uh, like the air does then. Exactly, exactly. Thir Thirty days of standby time. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, just in case, just in yeah, case, just, just so you say. It does have two Thunderbolt ports. Two USB headphone SD card HDMI. That's a lot of battery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Ars Technica picture shows just how much battery is in the thing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we had that over on the Verge, too. Let's look at the ports. Yeah, like you said, SD, USB 2 and 3. What's this thing? What's this little dongle thing they got going on here? Uh, I don't know. It, it's into the Thunderbolt. Is that just a Thunderbolt drive? It's probably just a Thunderbolt drive. Yeah, Thunderbolt accessories. Yeah. Which... What the hell? What is that camera? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that the new Apple digital camera that people are rumor or have been rumoring? I doubt it. <laughs> they, they just pulled it out of their uh, 1989 list of things <laughs> to do. <laughs> oh, adapters for FireWire. FireWire is not dead. There's your adapter for your Ethernet. So uh, the dongle business is booming right now because everybody's going to go buy stuff. Yeah. Well, they did, They gave the dongle business a spike with the air. Mm -hmm. Just be, just because if you want to run the second monitor and if you aren't going to drop the grand on the uh, on the Thunderbolt display, I then yeah, to... you have to drop the 30 on the uh, adapter. That's what I have. I just want to answer that this whole operation is being run by two dongles coming out of a Mac Mini for these displays. Dongles are alive and well. Bluetooth 4.0, 802.11n. Uh, is this the first with n? Have they had n in uh, a few of them before? So they've had n. The, the, current, the current has n. The current has n already, okay. Of course we made a video. <laughs> of course they did. So uh, oh, we still don't have a price point yet. Dual no, mics. Christine, Christina Mashable is guessing. Uh, her her opener is a twenty two ninety nine. See how good she is. Twenty two ninety nine. Johnny Ive, waxing romantically about creating the new Mac Pro. You disconnect from the past, he said. Man, I can't wait to check out the new Johnny Ive videos. This, uh, yeah, this is definitely the, I want a MacBook Air, but I also want to do everything I did before kind of thing, because it's got the power. AJ's happy about that. Mm -hmm. Says that they've seen the light with the new HDMI out. Correct. Nice. Oh, no dongle for that anymore. That's right. Yeah. Mine doesn't work half the time. There's a comparison there of HDTV. Versus the resolution actually is. Scary zebra looking at me. Yep. Scary zebra. I really hope this scrolls soon. 
It's a scary zebra. I want to see robot unicorn attack evolution on that thing. <laughs> In retina <laughs> graphics, I'm sure that would be tremendous. That would be beautiful. <laughs> Intel Core i7 they're showing off. But those aren't real pictures. Verge is really psyched about this, hardware wise at least. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we are 40 minutes into this almost and we're still talking laptops. Yeah, surprising. And actually kind of refreshing. Yeah, at the at the developer conference. Well, you know, I mean, that's always the thing. Is the Mac out the window? Is the Mac going away? Are you gonna turn everything iOS? And they follow this up with a MacBook Pro, or a, I'm sorry, a Mac Pro tower. Yeah, I was gonna say. Speaking of refreshing, how about refreshing some of those desktop machines? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because uh, you know, a Mac Mini only gets you so far. I mean, I, I know those. I know those old ones run really well. Because I know when I left a year ago, they're still running 2007 uh, Mac Pros, and they're running pretty good. <laughs> now, of course, when you think about it, in with the accent, it's built for extreme performance. It's remarkably powerful. They're not purchasing standard ports so we can create product that's elegant and more efficient. So they are creating their USB ports. Again. No, parts. All oh, parts. Yeah. But they probably are creating their own uh, ports and everything just mm -hmm. to make it all fit in there just right. And we pass the cost off to you. <laughs> As you're going to purchase your first ever $3,000 laptop. Standard. But for those guys, you know, for freaking out their MacBook Pros, you know, this isn't much different. AJ says that he has to try to contain himself in public right now watching this. Um... He also retweeted Chatbot Paul Wonderful Demo Retina Tweetbot for Mac. <laughs> uh, top of the line MacBook Pro is third sale for your left arm and right leg. And according to Pants, there the new Mac will have two Thunderbird ports, be able to heal lepers, and turn water into a zero calorie pomegranate isotonic. What exactly is that jig that they're showing it in? They just have it in like this ring system. I, I, I'm guessing we're looking at the manufacturing stuff. Uh, we, I mean, we'll find out in a couple hours when this stuff go, all goes on the website and we'll be watching this stuff again. But. Is that how they? Uh, is that how they're machining the unibody case? Is that what that is? That's probably it. Yeah. So apparently they change instead of placing the fan blades symmetrically, they do theirs asymmetrically, and that helps keep it quieter. Really? Yeah. Apparently. I know that's one of my gripes with uh, my MacBook Air. Whenever the fans kick on, it gets loud. Taxiing for takeoff. Pretty much. <laughs> There's our specs showing up for twenty one ninety nine. Twenty one. Eight gigabytes standard. One gigabyte in that GT uh, GeForce GT six fifty. Two hundred fifty six gigabytes flash storage. Seven hour battery life. Wow. That's uh. That's that's good. That's good. Get your credit cards out, says Verge. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, 
quite honestly, for, for what that's giving you, that's really not that bad of a price. No, I mean, I'm thinking about what I paid for my MacBook Pro in 2009, and it's a 15 inch. It was the. After you get that plan and everything, it was about $2,500. Yeah. But I have no qualms about not replacing it. Yeah, well, here's the green checklist. Yeah. Make sure to get all those ones out there back. Start shipping today. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, I wonder what that's going to be expandable up to. Uh, like, we know that the memory is going to go up to um, 16 gigs. Did yeah. they say about uh, storage? Is that going to top out at that 768? Yeah, it is. <laughs> are, you, are you reading the Verge one? Oh, yeah. Hot damn. Late, later, Apple execs will be swimming through a new pile of gold coins. Who's the duck stuff? Yep. Probably the best computer we've ever made. So, laptops. That's a hell of a line of laptops. Right <laughs> Not that half of them have looked any different in the last two years, but now they do have some. I mean, these guys are incremental, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. We're going OS X? No desktops? I don't know, maybe they're yeah. Yeah, to yeah, that's computer. next. And yeah, what about the uh, 17 inch machine? want to hear about iOS and are getting sick of hearing about laptops. I, I, I feel like that would get uh, lumped together, you know? Yeah, yeah, you'd think that. I don't know. Unless they're, they're going to be throwing something mind blowing out there that only works with MacBook Pros. Or, uh, sorry, Mac Pro. Fred Federici is out. Am I saying that right? Federici? No. Federici? Now we're still talking about user adoption versus Windows 7. <laughs> well, it helps when the thing's only $30. 26 million copy ship, Mac installed base is... I am, I'm trying to interpret these graphs here. Um, now line was made a new release. Oops. Find new features. I'm going to detail just eight. Icons for Gene Center. It looks like, is that Siri? Yeah. Or a Siri like icon? Yeah. Sharing. Yeah, that's what that is. Hot damn! So everybody's going to be yelling at their laptops in the coffee shops now. Excellent. Screw that. I want to yell at my laptop in the car. Hands free programming. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, you're kind of yelling at your laptop right now in the coffee shop, so. Well, that happens regularly for me. Oh, yeah. Calendar? Oh, who's excited about calendar? They're going to change the look of it? Got to love that fake leather print. Oh, they're talking about when you, when you, uh, by iCloud being built right in. Messages, notes. So finally, when I, all those notes I've been making my iPad will go somewhere other than my phone. I, I do. Use, does anybody else use the Notes app on their iPad a lot? Like, meeting-wise? I, I, I have a little bit. I wish I had a better mm -hmm. note-taking thing, but it gets the job done for me. Well, I know s since I don't have an iPad, I um, what I use between... Uh, my MacBook Air and my Galaxy Nexus, yeah, I use Evernote, which seems to work really well. Now, uh, we're mentioning when you launch pages, it shows you all the docs in the cloud and it makes those available across all these devices. Are we getting new pages? Um, because, once again, you know, 09. 
last one? So new developer SDKs, you can add support for all your stuff. Text edit, preview, keynote, numbers, pages. Oh, now it's demo time. Documents in the cloud, huh? What a novel approach. Yeah, I've only been doing that since 1990. I, I really wish, like, and I know they'll never do it because they have their own servers, but I really wish these were, like, compatible with, like, a Google Docs or a Dropbox or something. You know, it's like, well, why not put it in multiple clouds so I'm safe because I don't trust any one of you. We got reminders. So, you know, you can be reminded to pick up, dry cleaning. Your laptop? Going off notes right now. You pull off notes in the separate windows. And the big one's messages. Now, I've been playing with the messages beta. But has anybody else been? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I used it a uh, good bit. Uh, I quit using it, though, because every time that I'd come back from uh, my computer being asleep, it asked me for permission to proceed with a non secure Jabber login. And I could not find anywhere what was triggering it. So maybe that was just a bug in there. Um, yeah. I also love when I get messages by my wife who we send messages to each other. And it, when I'm working on my computer, my iPad dings in my phone. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm a soldier. Well, that's kind of how it is for me because I always have Chrome open on here because I use that as my browser. And I have the Google chat widget mm -hmm. installed through Chrome. So whenever something comes up on the computer, it's... Uh, ringing on my phone too. It is nice though. I, I know, you know, Chachi. Of course, uh, he he just got into an iMac and he he just discovered iChat. And loved it. Yeah, that's what I was using messages. It it was working really well. The uh, there were times though where now given yeah, it, I'm using the beta for it, but there were times where if I responded on my phone, it wouldn't show up in the messages. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I was using the the Google widget built into Chrome, it uh, whatever I typed on my phone would show up there. So hopefully that's a bug that they get worked out. Turning off drag and drop to the cloud for documents. Okay. That sounds like that sounds like the old idea, doesn't it? Uh, Verge is reminding us that we take a look at a bunch of these features in our mountain line preview, which we ran a few months ago. So this is nothing new. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering why they said that they were going to unveil mountain line, given yeah, this is going to be the finished up version. But I don't know. There's a shot of them up there uh, going off. A little preview of life in mountain line with the iCloud. Next up is notification center. Somebody has a lot of windows open, that's for sure. Um, who do we have here? Oh, well, there you go. And you got uh, you're going to have pop-ups in the in the corner. Well, I guess we don't need growl anymore. Um, that's one of the things that uh, a lot of people were saying. Uh, that you could get essentially Mountain Lion now just by installing a few different things. Uh, one was Evernote, uh, one was the Messages Beta, one was Growl. Mm -hmm. But it's nice that it's like, it, the whole thing is this becoming parody with what you're doing on your iPhone. Yeah. To make that, make that gap a little easier to bridge, you know? Yeah. It looks like we got a new icon for notifications there. I bet you'll see that in iOS 6 when we talk about it eventually here. Um, Wouldn't that be great if they ended it with see you all tomorrow for the discussion on iOS 6? <laughs> we have so much <laughs> to talk about here. 
what we're going to talk about later. We're really going to talk about nothing new. Nintendo. Um, yeah, I heard those, the extra things for Nintendo. They just really didn't talk about anything. It was just like stuff we've already talked about. Yeah, AJ just said that notification thing is cool. It's called Growl and has been around for like eight years. Yep. Next up, Dictation. Uh, the system and works everywhere. Which even, is not Siri. Even in Microsoft Word. Well, this is what we got out of uh, iPad 3, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it was, mm-hmm. it, was the, it wasn't Siri. It was... It's just text to... Or just speech to text and nothing else. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's... That's, that's a step. Which I think that that's already built in because I was trying to find about like any kind of voice control systems that I could put on my Mac and apparently it has some voice action stuff and it has text to speech built in somewhere. Like in accessibility probably? Yeah, yeah, that's where it is. All right, here's our sharing. Of course, you can share directly to iMessage, email, AirDrop, Twitter, Flickr. right from the app where you're working. I'm sure if it's supported. Like, it looks like we have the preview application going on here. Yeah. Now I know with uh, with Twitter now, aren't you able, with the stock Twitter client on Mac, aren't you able just to drag something in there now? I don't know. I don't mess with that too much. Oh, new Safari. I just got an update for that. The fastest JavaScript. IE9 second in that regard. Too bad no, you can't get not. Too bad you can't IE9 on your Mac. Unified smart search field, just like Chrome. Thank you, because that screws me up every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope I can turn it off. <laughs> you like your ad- address bar separated from your search? Yes, and never the tw- never the two shall meet. That line between the two is so important to you. Uh, matches from bookmarks in history. Uh, new feature called iCloud Tabs. It syncs your devices. Hello. Um, I'm not trying to sound like a troll or anything, but Chrome does that, yeah. and it works very well. Chrome does that, exactly, and and does now hit in parity with that. So this is, I mean, you know, you got to think with iOS and everything, this is their catch-up time to everything that... Well, sure, know. Firefox did it years ago as well. There was a plug-in for Firefox that did it. Yeah. Yep, exactly, exactly. Now... Yeah, I, actually, I was doing that. I had Firefox on my computer, and Firefox is the browser on my phone before Chrome uh, made that uh, oh, possible. I, I'd still love to see it like a Chrome on my iPhone to do the same thing because I'm not going to go to Safari. I, I live too much in the Google ecosystem right now. Mm-hmm. So. Got a little time for tab view, it looks like. And that's a new feature. Well, that's, uh, I bet it's going to 3Dify my... Uh, Web pages again, like their preview window. Well, it's showing up. Yeah. Nothing more exciting than a web browser demo. Oh, I know. I think they keep showing the same picture at home on a computer here. <laughs> Again, guys, if you're just joining us, we're uh, we're uh, following the live blogs here for WWDC keynote coverage. So far, we have new MacBooks, a new line of MacBook Pros, at least uh, that kind of is MacBook airified, I guess you could say, Retina displays, all that kind of stuff. So uh, some uh, pretty interesting announcements so far. Thunderbolt. And, uh, Mike Pound from the Beaver County Times and the Frank. Just gonna keep making up the names for you, man. Okay, that works. From insert coin to begin. Uh, Derek, aka uh, at Shadow Shadow on Twitter. 
in the Hangouts. And we are all over the place here on Hangouts, media.com and over at timesonline.com. Now here's something while we're um, while we're just sitting here while they demo a browser, which it does look like the tab view thing uh, looks pretty nice. I think that's a good feature. Uh, while they're doing that, and there's not too much for us to talk about, here's something that Gizmodo just posted: that the Apple MagSafe two chargers are redesigned and they're skinnier now, so uh, people who get different uh, travel chargers like to have that. Um, the one that you can use on airplanes and like car charger outlets and whatnot, you're going to have to go out and replace those to have it work with MagSafe 2. And chances are speculating that it's going to be more expensive, which I believe right now it's $90 for a regular charger and 50 for the adapter for airline. So, yeah. Uh, I can tell you that I got a a car charger that works with MagSafe for $42 from eBay and uh, a dongle from Radio Shack that makes it into an air adapter for about 10 bucks. Okay, there you go. It's the way to go. System-wide share buttons work like, uh, like sharing in Android does, which is a good thing, says The Verge. Um, mm -hmm. Sharing works in full-screen apps, too. Tab view is tabs in mobile Safari, in case you're wondering, I say. Oh, so like, yeah, okay, so what you usually see when you're flipping through sites on there. Uh, notifications also support internet notifications from services like Twitter. So what, if I'm on like Twitter.com? and it's, uh, So it's push notifications, but for, for Mac OS as opposed to iOS, that's all. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. And if I want to tweet something, I can summon a tweet sheet right here. A notification center at the bottom. I hope off you can. I hope you can turn off that horrible tweet sound. However, <laughs> <laughs> is that power nap? Is that seriously a feature? <laughs> New technology in OS X that we call power nap. Now, isn't that called um, coffee break or something like that? As an app that you can download now. No. Or caffeine break. There's something that just sets a timer that disables your computer for 10 minutes every however often you set it up to run. Well, apparently this one uh, keeps your Mac up to date while it sleeps. Wouldn't it be great if our computers still worked for us when we weren't working? Now it can. So it's wake on LAN, except that it wakes up periodically, says, is there an update? And if not, it goes back to sleep. <laughs> Will backup while sleeping... Keeps your Mac up to date while it sleeps. Wow. That, uh, that could be interesting until you get that. So is this turning into like what they're doing with Chrome, maybe? Or just kind of updates in the background for you? Seems like, but it, al it also seems a little reminiscent of, um, what do you call it, just the way that a Windows computer updates. That you just turn it on and it tells you you have an update, and it will apply it when you restart it. Automatically refreshes data, silent, power efficient versus the Airbook MacBook Airs and the new MacBook Pro, not the old one? Interesting. AirPlay mirroring is up next. Now, here's something whenever they say the new MacBook Pro now. Which one do they mean? Do they mean just the Super MacBook Pro <laughs> or, like, all of the... 2012 yeah, MacBook. they really didn't uh, distinguish the MacBook Pros, did they? Because it's like, it's, it feels like what they did with the iPad. Um, it's like, well, I want the iPad. Well, which iPad? The, which one? The new iPad. Yeah. Oh, the iPad. Like, no, the, the not iPad 3 iPad. The, the one that's not the 2. But then, <laughs> well, why don't I get the 2? Because that one has a 2 by, so obviously it's the second one, but it's cheaper than the one you're trying to sell. I, yeah, I, I just can't see how this works for people. Um, so yeah, so with AirPlay, I guess, uh, came to the OS now. They're showing off um, Game Center, App Store. Uh, oh, so MacBook Pro with Retina display? Apparently that's it? Uh oh 
but not regular MacBook Pro. So I not in not in Mac Minis, not in, in, in Mac Pros or anything like that. It's like you've got to get the new hotness if you want this feature. It's very Apple of them, but I don't completely understand why that is. Yeah. Because it can't because it can't spin up the drive. Don't have to spin up the drives for SSD maybe. So that takes up less power. Uh, I would guess that there's some sort of functionality in in the uh, one of the bridge chipsets they're using that enables them to do that. But that's just a wild, off-the-handle guess. Say so they're going to do a little demo of head-to-head uh, -head gaming across platform, and they're showing uh, laptop, iMac, and the iOS devices. Um, let me show you my Mac screen and my Apple TV. So there you go. There's your Mac screen, your Apple TV. Way to go. How are you do this with an HDMI cable? Oh, his name is Hair Force One in the uh, game center. I don't know. Is this a, is it like live sort of thing for them? I don't know. It just seems just. I don't know. I... <laughs> Who looks at their game center? Eh, First off, wait. is that the Stig? Oh man, Racer OSX is out. In the Racer game. OSX is out, and Top Gear readies their lawyers. There you go. Some say he's a ripoff of a well-known British man. You know, this might be up your alley. Head to head uh, in CSR Racing, a new game. iPad versus Mac. Now, think about when we had the discussions of when you're doing like uh, gamepad versus mouse and keyboard for a, a first-person shooter. How is that going to be for touch or gyroscope versus uh, or Mac yeah. controls? Yeah, it's easy to demo that for a racing game just because you just tilt the uh, iPad whichever way you want to go I mean, and you like, use arrow mm -hmm. keys. It's, well, like, that's a fairly simple thing to figure out. But, yeah, once you get into a shooting game, that changes everything. I even think this because your reaction time is going to be different on keys versus a gyroscope, I think. Yeah, that's true. Like, I feel like... You know, if it's if it's ideally the the one with the gyroscope turning it should uh should win. There we go. We got 200 more features. The mail VIP launchpad search. Hey, I here's for China. China gets features <laughs> that we can't talk about. We don't talk about China. <laughs> Offline reading list. Uh, you wanted to? Oh, you, we are going to. Oh no, we are going to talk about features it. Features for China. <laughs> China, we automatically disable Facebook and send it to the government for you. <laughs> you Your share button has a direct link to the government. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Report this to. Really, these are uh, reports in your uh, rip-off Apple store. You know, we're, we're an hour in, and we still haven't gotten to anything iOS yet. No, huh? no, we're not. Nope. Because they've, they've packed other absolutely than, everything else into this. Other than nope. the Siri jokes. When was the, the last time that that even happened? They got this far without any iOS. 2007. Like 2007, really? Last year I was there, because the year after that, suddenly I couldn't get a free pass anymore. Because there was all this iOS stuff going on. People seemed a little bit more interested, huh? Yep. So we got iCloud for, I, these are services over there. I recognize some of these services that I may have uh, watched some uh, shows on.
$19.99 for this update. Well, that's an easy decision. Oh, yeah. It was $30 last year. Coming in July. All right. No problem. Man, that kind of changes things with that. Like, I I have these older Macs, and I'm, like, pulling out the old Snow Leopard CD, which also was $30. And this slide, they showed that graph earlier of adoption rates of... Uh, of uh, Lion versus Windows 7 for user upgrades. Upgrades from Lion and all the way from Snow Leopard and will upgrade all of your personal Macs. You buy a new Mac, it's free. And today devs get access to the near final preview. Next up, iOS. Mac so Pro. Looks like it's not going to be anything with the uh, desktop computers then. Mac right? Pro no fanatics are fuming right now. Oh, yeah. Fuming. iOS. iOS Mountain Lion. Let's go. We all like numbers here. You know, wouldn't it be great if they, when they replace the number for iOS, because you know they will eventually. And they just make it small cats. iOS cabbie. iOS <laughs> Siamese. Sold more than 365 million iOS devices through March. All right, now we're getting the bragging numbers again. Uh, installed base of iOS 5 versus iOS 4. That's pretty impressive. I don't know what this is. Oh, versus Androids. <laughs> Complete. <laughs> Look at all the 2 3 guys. Well, that's what all of the razors that are being sold are on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a huge one for them There's right now. There's all the stuff that's on Cricket. Who's mobile or whatever. Yeah, look at that. That, 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 that tells a tale right there why things yeah. aren't getting adopted over there for Android. Yeah. I mean, that sliver is your new OS, which has been out for six months, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Yeah, November. November, and they've only got that much versus iOS 5. They're just, yeah. The upgrade path, like you were just explained with your phone, has been ridiculous. Yeah, almost, all, almost all of our users, I wouldn't say almost all, that's a pretty big, that's like, that's still 20% of your user base. Yeah, that's Part of the problem is just the way the carriers see themselves. Yeah. The carrier, like if whatever Apple says, carriers are going to do just because they want to keep the iPhone coming. Well, and that's where that's where Apple made the difference. They said we're not gonna we're gonna cut you out of this. We're gonna do what we want with this. Yeah. And you're yeah. gonna like it. Yeah. And Google has to send it in and wait for Verizon to approve it. And if if you know they don't approve the update for the Galaxy Nexus, okay. Who cares? You still have how many people on the other versions of Android. It's not that big of a deal. This, this is big. Nexus Twitter. We integrated Twitter directly with iOS 5 last year. They've seen a three times growth in increase of iOS. Nearly half of all, of all the photos come from iOS 5. I the rest are from Instagram. <laughs> that's, still, that's still probably from iOS. But yeah. Nexus Game Center. We uh, have 130 people using it. Define using it. I have an account. I have games. I don't go there too often. All well, it says that they have uh, 130 people, 130 million using it, and 130 accounts. So yeah. This is like Five billion scores every week. Seamless. I just go play Angry Birds and it updates. Yeah. Well, that, that's like, you know, to go back to uh, Robot Unicorn. Attack Evolution takes what all of a minute and a half to play a full game. Yeah, it's just resetting you do it again. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that counts a lot of these. Um, that counts for a lot of these uh, games that are a lot of times you download a late version. Like remember Frogger Pinball last week? Uh, I'm pretty sure that connected up with uh, Game Center. Yeah, it was just a try. I'm happy to announce iOS 6. The best look 
looking logo we have for our numbers. More than 200 new features, starting with Siri. Here we go. Can I have it everywhere yet? How about now? You can call, get weather, set an alarm, find your friends, dictate a note. AJ retweeted Tapbot Paul. Other new features for China are built-in key loggers and firewall. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> she's been only out eight months. It does so much for you. Siri is fantastic that she's been studying up. Siri, what is the stock for Apple right now? Just a bit so far today, $581.48. Just a bit up. Just a bit. Just a bit. Thank you, Siri. Oh, we can do sports scores now, so I'll be ah. deleting my ESPN app. So we see an example of the... The Giants were down by the Rangers yesterday. The final score was 5-0. to zero. I wonder if Siri is going to have gender issues like the Yins team updater <laughs> that, we, uh, that turned everybody into females uh, in the report. Uh, Josh Sager was the MVP. She had three home runs. <laughs> that was a fantastic read, by the way. Yes, it was. Um, Buster Posey is battling average of 2.290. She is enthusiastic. AJ says slightly helpful uh, as far as the sports scores. Uh, and players get cards. So there you go. We just ran the uh, what's left of the baseball card business out. And now they're going to announce. And now they're going to announce that you can have those baseball cards printed and sent to you. Just like the old green card app uh, application. That would be cool. What, yeah. are the, what are the National League standings? What are they connecting with with for this? Like what like you know, we have Wolfram Alpha we'll do stuff like but yeah. who is this through? Because that's the thing, is they have to sign up through some sort of service or I was to say, does ESPN maybe have an API now or something? I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I I haven't seen this interface on any of the sports stuff that I use on my phone. No, and it's well, all I need is the data, and, and Siri knows yeah. how to interpret it. So it, it's it's not necessarily. Yeah. SB Nation sports buddies are going to love this. Okay, that's the uh, oh, that, yeah. that's the verse talking. Well, let's see how uh, this lovely little thing I have for uh, Android compares. So it could work. Now, is that that's not the uh, the Samsung <laughs> speech thing, is it? No. It's another app. It's called AVX. It's an independent thing. Hmm. What are the national... Find a great place for dinner. What are the National League standings? They've uh, partnered with Open Table for uh, making reservations. Go to sleep again. <laughs> yes, Frank. It's what are the National League standings? Working on it. Did you hear its response? Yes. Something One of about the mysteries, mysteries of the universe. universe. And it may stay that way. For the sports standings. Tremendous. Okay, well, I'm sorry. We're distracted here. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. They've integrated Rotten Tomatoes. That's great. Siri, does this movie I'm watching suck? There you go. Um, it said open table for making reservations for their showing off some you know, fun, in, fun in there. Uh, uh, really, it looks like more detaching from Google <laughs> to me. So you see, uh, 
Sound 8 movies at the Metreon. Now, how does this work? I'm in Western New York, and both theaters are a half an hour in the opposite direction. Show me movies starring Scarlett Johansson. There you go. Ask for directors or actors. Show, show, you know, show me movies with Scarlett. I guess I won't tell you about the mysteries of the universe if you ask for Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is this? This looks fancy. Um, it's learned how to launch apps. Thank you. Those are the launching uh, Temple Run. That is one of the things that AVX for Android does do very well. Good. good. Well, you guys, uh, the Android, you've got a little more of a connection that can do that. Because um, I know I have a few apps that are like not one I use every day. And I keep forgetting where I put them on my phone. <laughs> AJ uh, says, uh, uh, Dear Apple, please stop with the textures and headers that make stuff look chintzy. Key notes, Game Center, and the movie section. What's this, eyes free? Oh, you can just now tweet just by talking to your phone. Technically, you could kind of do that now. Um, oh, there you go. We have some hands-free interaction. Oh, I see. They're, they, this is uh, apparently integrating with in-car systems. Looks like GM, BMW, okay, a bunch of stuff. Looks like it looks like everybody's on board with this. <laughs> Except for yeah, no, that's everybody. Oh no Ford. Actually. Not Ford, no. No Ford, oh. but they they got their thing. So and but you know what? Their thing is Microsoft. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. So we've added something called Eyes Free. We're working with car manufacturers to include a button that will bring up Siri. So you can keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. The number of manufacturers are committed to delivering this in the next 12 months. So it's like another feature in your car. New languages. We're including Canada, A. Eh? Canada is a language? We're adding Italian. It's a dialect. <laughs> it's like, remember when uh, Siri wouldn't work for uh, Australians? Right. They had to pack right. It? Well, there you go, Italians. I didn't know Italians weren't in here. So wait, so they were selling this in countries that were getting Siri, but couldn't use it. Korean, Mandarin for Taiwan, Cantonese. You know, world tra travelers, Chinese look like. I hear something that uh, AVX has that I thought that they were about to announce with Siri with the eyes free thing is you can assign a name to it and it'll automatically wake your phone up and you can tell it to do whatever. So like I've I've done it a couple times where I'm talking that or where I'm in the middle of cooking something, and, you know I have my hands covered in raw chicken. I don't want to touch my phone, so I just wake it up, send Abby a text message for whatever, and then. It just reads it back to me, asks to confirm, and then sends. Entirely touch-free. So that's something that I was actually expecting them to announce with Siri. Siri will be coming to the new iPad. The, you know, the iPad. Uh, next Facebook. So uh, there's that, that stay tuned comment from uh, All Things D a couple weeks ago coming to fruition. It makes sense, right? Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, it's like, you gotta. You gotta. You need to ask Siri for a Facebook stock quote. What is Facebook stock price? 
Yes. Am I asking these right? I'm not a stock person. It looks like Facebook is up so far today. Twenty-seven dollars and forty-four cents. Still not back to the offering price. No, nope. no. Give, me, give it about ten minutes after this gets explained. <laughs> I think that's going to help it a whole lot. Oh yeah, that's true. Lot. We wrap up the show. Ask again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after oh, what is this? You can Facebook. Well, this is going pretty fast. Um, but luckily created the best Facebook experience on mobile device. Integrated like Twitter. Log in from settings. Share the apps like photos or Safari maps. Aim Center. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, post to Twitter and built-in notification center. That's nice. Yeah, they were, look at these buttons uh, and notifications. Tap the tweet, tap the post. That's interesting. Yeah. API can so you can add functionality to your app. Where's but the Google we, Plus love? What's that? Where's the Google Plus love? <laughs> You're probably never going to see that. It is not happening. No. It is not happening. No. Well, it's got the front face and camera. It's a natural for the Hangout system. Mm -hmm. Not when it has to compete with FaceTime. FaceTime is one-on-one, -on -one, man. <laughs> Contact integration as well is showing off. So well, here you, you'll pop up a review from Facebook, and you can like it. Like three friends, uh, showing the app story, see three friends uh, liked uh, Piece of Soccer 12. There's an integration brought it to the Mac as well. Looks like Jalopnik has posted a story about the fake Stig, and they're rather upset. Oh, no. <laughs> Those don't know, Stig is a character on Top Gear. In the meantime, it looks like they've done some updates for the phone app, and this contact stuff that they're showing is pretty nice, but it does look similar to what the contacts and ice cream sandwich look like. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I, like I said, this is their catch-up time. It's going to look very familiar to you, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like this. Uh, well, you get a call or a reply with message or remind me later. That's an interesting feature. Remind me one hour when I leave when I get home. Later, I'm on my way. Like, yeah. Or remind me when I leave, which will set up a geofence and remind me when you're leaving the building. Wow. Next up, something That's called cool. Do Not Disturb. Boy, I like this. <laughs> so I'm not completely cutting it off by going in the airplane mode, but I can turn off. Yeah, but that'd be nice. I, I'm presuming it's going to turn off all your notifications, so there's a thought bugging me. You know, waking the mail at night, you know, by NBA Jam letting me know that you know, uh, they're having an NBA Finals sale on Content Pack. It'll, um, the message will still come to your phone, it just won't light up the screen or make a sound. You set up from your time to time. You can allow calls from a uh, certain list, it looks like. So that's going to be... It says in incoming calls from your favorites won't be silenced. Yeah. Okay. You also get the fine grain control over uh, which phone calls you receive, actually. Um, it's nice you can also do groups. You can also set up repeated calls. If someone calls a second time in three minutes, it will come through. That's... Smart. That's super smart. Now all the telemarketers will just call you twice. Oh, at three in the morning. Uh, <laughs> oh. FaceTime over cellular. Really? 
Yeah, there was a jailbreak app to bring it out a long time ago. It clearly worked. They were just limiting it because the providers told them to. Oh, it was obvious that they did. Um, but that's that's great. So take that, providers, get over it, um, and fix your network. Seems to be the message here. Well, they're not beholden to anybody now that they're everywhere. That's true. They're just baiting them to fight against each other because if AT&T decides to deny that, Verizon will have a heyday advertising against AT&T or vice versa. <laughs> and is there really a way for AT&T to block this? Deep packet inspection. <laughs> okay. Unifying your phone and Apple ID. If someone calls you on your phone out, uh, number for FaceTime, you can answer it on your iPad or Mac. Same That's thing with iMessage. Um, here we go. Mobile browser usage. Big chunk for iOS. Next up is Safari. Best and most popular on the planet. Two thirds of all mobile traffic comes from Safari in iOS. Mostly because I don't have a choice. Yeah. Like I was going to say, that's the thing. One of the first things I did, like, well, with Ice Cream Sandwich, it had a redesigned browser, so I played around with that for a while. Yeah. And as soon as Chrome came out, I just jumped to that. Abby, whenever she got her Razor, first thing she did was install Do Dolphin Browser. So, we're, and that's probably what they're talking about. They're like the Android browser, not something that came from an Android. <laughs> Offline reading list, that's handy. That just killed a couple of services. Yeah. Camera roll. Oh, so when I need to upload a picture through a website, now I can do that. Because that always bothered me. Yeah. And I guess it's just a matter of interpreting, you know, taking to the file browser versus the picture here. Uh, what's this? We got smart app banners. How it looks like they're advertising the app when you go to the website. Like you're showing Yelp, and there's a drop down looks like for the app. And I guess it's a hey. Kind of thing. I often get those. I often get those anyway. Yeah, yeah. So Just those pop ups from mobile sites. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. A lot of uh, a lot of sites actually say, "Hey, we have an app. Quit wasting your time with our website and just use the app." And I can't go to the site without them reminding me they have an app. Thanks, IMDb. Oh. Adding full screen support in landscape. Hmm. Next up is photo screen. Can you believe how many pictures I have in there? Oh, there you go. There's your uh, landscape mode. I don't, know, I don't understand what they mean by full support in landscape, though. Oh, here's something that AJ just pointed out that yeah. Android does have the ability to tell a website that you always want the desktop version. Okay, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. You can share photo streams. Google Plus. So, I presumably this is going to be Facebook, Twitter kind of stuff, maybe. Big Sur. Well, didn't they just pull the uh, photo uh, section of Mobile Me? Choose photos, choose the friends. Friends will get a notification. The photos here in an album, and friends can comment. Uh, the comment weird. This is like a Facebook feature, almost like Apple's own social network, but not really open. We got mail. We can add, this is add VIP. Is that a uh, mail VIP thing we were talking about earlier for uh, OSX maybe? Quickly access mail from important people in your VIP mailbox. I don't know. Mail VIP sounds like an escort service to me. Mm. You'll get a notification, it looks like, from anybody that's in your VIP. Interesting. Interesting thing, but we still kind of have that with, I mean, if you have Gmail, you have important tags and stuff like that. 
You can insert photos easily, it looks like, into emails, midstream. Gizmodo says the uh, mail VIP feature uh, pops up uh, notifications on your lock screen mm -hmm. wherever you have every have designated. And you can reply from there too. You have password protected uh, files. AJ just made a good point. Everyone thinks AT&T will hate Apple for enabling FaceTime over 3G. Wrong. AT&T will watch you destroy your data plan and make you pay. As will uh -huh. Verizon. Yep. Yep. And Verizon's probably going to wrap the whole FaceTime over 3G and uh, actually, yeah, they aren't coming out with the iPhone 5, so I guess you don't need to worry about 4G yet. But yeah, they're they're just going to bundle that into the family data packages that are going to be coming out later this year. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, you have all these services, but now you're like, okay, but I don't want to use them. You know. It's a brand new uh, app. Passport. This is a place for you to collect boarding passes, store cards, and movie ticket apps. There's another couple iOS apps that just got killed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Android apps do the same thing. Now, here's the thing, though, with this. Some places don't accept your cards if they're on your phone. Because I believe whenever Abby first got her Android phone that she tried that with uh, Giant Eagle and her Advantage card, and she had some trouble having it accepted there. Was it through an app, or how? Yeah. How? Okay. okay. So, like, the problem know? is... The, the glossy screen on the phones is hard to scan if you don't have the brightness turned all the way up. That's the problem. Yeah, that's an issue. I mean, they're showing QR codes for these things. Um, I, presumably, if they have something listed here, I'm guessing they would be accepting of it. Yeah. Like, a, you know, they're showing Target and Fandango mm -hmm. and Starbucks. Like, I think they're like, okay, you guys are going to get this now. And you get reminders when you bought something like Fandango on here. It looks like just a bunch of apps are getting built in to iPhone here. Yeah. Now, here's something to look at. You, we're talk, Like you just said, a lot of stuff's getting built into iOS, but what about the people who don't necessarily even use all that stuff, who just want the basic phone? How is this going to affect them? Do you think they're still going to want to stick with the iPhone if it's going to have oh. all this extra stuff that they didn't want and never asked well, for? Well, for those people, they're not going to look into their phone and investigate for these features. This is going to be a I'm going to go book a ticket with Amtrak, and it's like, oh, do you have an iPhone? Because we can do it that way, too. And we're like, oh, really? And, and they follow through with that if, they, if they're curious enough, or they're like, no, I'll just go with my old curmudgeon e weights. But it's an interesting idea. It's not NFC, but it's a uh, step somewhere. I don't know. Oh, what is this? It's, looks like you have a digital shredder for your card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay, Apple Store. I don't think you can do that. MLB Giants game there. Fandango, of course. Fandango's always about being kind of ahead of that. Geolocate will pull up your card when you're nearby a store, like when you go to your local Starbucks. That's handy. Yeah, definitely. Because one of the things I'm thinking with this is how many times you're going to be behind someone at Starbucks, they're going to get their toe and then say, oh, I want to use my card, and then you get out the phone and start flipping through their apps until they find it. That, that's really nice that they work that in there. Yeah. You know, there's something somewhere where you got to bring up the app, and it's like, okay, you got to bring it up. Is it something I go through all the time? This way you get all your passes and tickets together in one place. Now, here's, here's something nice that uh, if your boarding pass changes that, like, your gate info or whatever, it'll update that for you. That's what oh, that, that's awesome. We're getting a guided access here, so we find out how that blind guy did this stuff. Um, it was set out to be uh, to make the most accessible devices. Let's 
say, if you're just joining us, uh, we're still going over WWDC. We're uh, well into iOS 6 announcements. Uh, we have uh, more Siri options. We have uh, this passbook. Was a passbook, they call it? Yeah, passbook. Yes. Um, which uh, apparently you'll be able to store your tickets and gift cards and all that kind of stuff. Um, what is this? With kids. I'm surprised how many kids have, with autism have been using phones, uh, but there are controls and apps that you won't, uh, that you don't want them hitting. You can now select parts of apps to disable. Interesting. You have single app mode. This also could be handy for guys like Rob. They're doing uh, interesting things in the um, in uh, convention circuits. Yeah. The thing that I'm that that made me think of, not necessarily that it's a resolution to it, but just for the other random wandering, is uh, the whole argument that comes up when you talk about in-app purchases. Whenever you let your kids just run rampant with your devices, now you can disable that and just exactly. freeze them into one app. Exactly. Uh, but it is kind of a case of how many people will take the time to do that. Yeah, that's oh, true. This looks I, like a map. I app. think that that's going to be helpful. I, I see stuff about once a week from uh, uh, parental friends who. Um, Say their their kid has bought a fifty dollar book from Amazon just because they're messing around with the phone. If you can lock them out of that, or 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 better yet, if just lock them into particular apps or games or whatever you want, um, that's that's going to be helpful for a lot of people. Hmm. Looks like we're showing off the new maps. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, we I, I have no text go. here. We're just we're just seeing pictures of maps now. So. <laughs> I don't know. I've kind of moved on my navigation to Waze personally. So um, they look they look like maps, and there's a little grayed out 3D button down there, which is kind of expected. Of course, Google uh, I said goodbye Google Maps. Google just had their announcement last week where they announced a bunch of 3D options, stuff Android's going to get. Of course, we have uh, integrated Yelp. Wait, did we just pass by the maps? Already? Yeah. Yeah, that's all the maps was, apparently. They're like, hey, we got new maps, and we're done. Uh, okay, we've integrated Yelp as well. 100 million business listings. Take that, Google, and your Zagat. No, uh, I think we're still yeah, we're still talking about maps, I think. Incident re okay, yeah, you're right. Incident reports. You're also building a traffic service. So this is like the antithesis of what Google's doing, because Google has Zagat. Uh, Google has their traffic stuff. Uh, now, now tell me how you're replacing Street View, guys. Anonymous real-time crowdsourced. So, well, wow. If you're tapped into everybody that has the Maps application open, that's pretty powerful. Turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Yay. <laughs> Does this mean you're going to hear a bit more of the Siri voice now? Oh, well, there you go. It looks like turn by turn. Oh, and there's your 3D maps are coming in a bit. Um, quick route, faster route available. So it looks like it's doing a little bit like uh, like I know I see in ways. I know it's really responsive to what's going in traffic. It definitely looks Appleified. I mean, it works. Uh, they've integrated it with Siri. It also works from the lock screen as well. Yeah, I like the way they worked it into the lock screen like that. That's cool. Because I know what Google does is they just overlay it, and then if you hit the home button, then you need to unlock your phone. Yeah. But just the way that they worked it in like that, I think, is much slicker than what Google did. I said they've, they've integrated Siri with it, uh, like you're showing where, where can I get gas, gives you a list of stations. Are we, <laughs> are we there yet? Relax and enjoy your drive. You'll be there in 14 minutes. Finally, I have something to respond to Chachi with when we go on those trips for wrestling. Flyover. There you go. Oh, so this is uh. This is uh, this will be Google Earth. I have something called flyover. The people flying over San Francisco, it actually looks a lot like what it, it, exactly what Google announced last week. Oh, wow. So, yeah, there's a 3D view. Or, no, it's not, is it 3D? 
Or it's just we've been building, we've been through, uh, building up 3D models of cities around the world. Wow. All internally, just to serve their phone here. So that's their big competitor to Google Earth and, and Earth's yep. 3D buildings, huh? Well, and then my, my question now that they've dropped Google Maps, is Google Maps going to become a app on here? I can't see it not. But again, more I say of this, I don't think I care. Three D maps, they're 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 commenting very much like three D uh, Google's three D model on, on Android. Extremely fast performance on an iPad. That's a hell of a nav system if you're using an iPad. Satellite view. It really does look a lot like Google Maps. Mm -hmm. well, I guess you can't really do maps all that much different. Yeah. Now here's the thing. What Verge is saying is that a flyover is very visually impressive and detailed 3D. But this is the demo city. What happens when you get a city that has what a lot of cities in Google Earth has and you get the issues with where the shadows are whenever they do the flyover? Mm -hmm. How's that going to look? Uh, saying this is being rendered in real time on your phone or on a server? Let me choose another place. How about the Sydney Opera House they're going to? It, it looks really nice. I believe now we're going to Sydney, so they're obviously going to do more than just the states so far. Now they're going to show off turn, turn by turn. give you different routes and you can pick which one you want to take. Nice, nice. Yeah, and it does look like, uh, like they shouldn't on this picture here, uh, this looks like what you get in Google now with that last update last year. It actually looks exactly what you get in Google because he has a route 3 point to it and and everything. That's um, cool. Where are you seeing well,
than display. There you go. They really need to fix their naming convention. Yeah, I understand simplifying it, but... Uh... So it's the old new MacBook Pro or the new new MacBook yeah. Pro? Oh, wait, sorry. Here we go again. So, um, so that's up. It looks like uh, we got uh, the updates to the MacBook Air up on the site, of course. Um, iOS 6. So there you can check that out. Facebook, I think Facebook was a big thing. Um, man, even if they were friendly with Google for enough for Google+, Plus, um, I don't think you would see it because it doesn't have that kind of mass of people. No. You know? and the, also, interesting, they're putting that in the, in the iOS, but I don't think they were putting it in... Uh, oh, there's some broken images there, uh, Apple. Um, I don't think they're putting that in the in the mount line, are they? Maybe under their sharing. But uh, well, I guess uh, with that, uh, we'll be talking about this more, of course, on on uh, Awesome Cast and everything else. Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, Mike Pound, Beaver County Times. Thanks, Mike. Great to be here. At Michael B. Pound, thank you very much. Thanks for uh, featuring us over there on, uh, on on your website. Oh, well, I'm happy to. And I'd be happy to do it again. Go check out uh, uh, Mike's awesome uh, video series over there uh, that I'm blanking on at the moment. <laughs> uh, news break. News break. News break. I almost want to say. Break. I want to say news hour. I'm like, that's not an hour long. No. Oh God, no. No. <laughs> I, I struggle to get two minutes a day. Exactly. Exactly. It's it, it's fun. It's entertaining. Go go watch it over there. Timesonline.com, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, Frank Chnoweth at Fuzzwad on Twitter. He's over at InsertCoinToBegin.com. Yep. And uh, a lot of stuff from E3 last year. If you want to see a lot of our reactions for that, also the new uh, Let's Play. Yeah, that's so what I want to say with the exclamation mark every time. So, and uh, does that ring to it? Exactly. That's Let's Play. Uh, also in the Hangout, uh, Derek at Shadow. Hey, hey, plug anything you want. Anything? Uh no, I don't have anything to plug. Plug the Beehive since they, uh, their internet connection has been pretty good to you. Yeah, I was going to say, the Beehive, come down and enjoy some coffee at the Beehive, 14th and Carson Southside. There you go. Don't, don't steal my window. There you go. For, uh, <laughs> for all the guys, thanks a lot. Like I said, awesome cast. Let's play all uh, broadcasts uh, Tuesday night starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time, Uh We're starting to run the Hangouts and everything during that, so you can join us that way, maybe get a, something in there or... Chat room, of course, over on the website. Uh, for everybody else, this is Sorg. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Okay. That was my first recording on the new hardware. All right, thanks, guys. Nice. Looks like yep. I have a few fires I got to put out. Uh, uh, it really wasn't bad. Just like that, one, that one thing. Yeah. Oh. All right, guys. What? I'm gonna cut you guys off here. And, okay. See you, Mike. Uh, we'll see if you uh, tomorrow yeah. night.